something more? Just very quickly, it, I know it's the same thing, but I haven't quite got it. When it's people that are close to you, and, and they're not very happy, and you want them to be happy, and they're just not being happy, and, and maybe they're not being, they're ill, or they're in pain, or suffering of some sort, and you might be spending all your time with them, how do you stay in the right place, in, in alignment? even though they're not, even with the conversations you kind of get Well, first of all, out. if you're spending all of your time with them, you're screwed. <laughs> because you're not giving yourself an opportunity to come back into alignment. Dart in, take all you can take, and then meditate yourself back into the receptive mode. Then dart in, take all that you can take, and then dart out and meditate yourself back into the receptive mode. In other words, why would you ask yourself, especially after the conversation that we just had, why would you ask of yourself to defy the laws of the universe? Why would you say, I have the ability to see you in your sadness and in your unhappiness and it not affect my vibration. That's just not a possible thing. If you know they're sad, then you're sad about them being sad and you're not in alignment. And so sometimes you want to, your impulse is to not be there because your natural instinct, whether you admit it or not, is to feel good. Your natural instinct is to gravitate toward what feels good. But then you feel guilty because so often you've decided that if somebody else doesn't feel good, then you need to be there and help them feel better. But here, how that defies the step one and the step three part of the deliberate creative process. If they don't feel good and you're watching them not feel good, then you're all in step one and nobody's in step three. And step one is you're asking, asking, asking. But the problem is when you're asking from an awareness of the problem, you're vibrating with the problem. That's why sometimes prayers work and sometimes they don't. And when they don't work is because you're praying for something that you don't want to go away. You're focused upon the unwanted thing and you cannot focus upon the unwanted thing and diminish it. It will not diminish right before your eyes. And so, what you would want to say to someone who you love and who you want them to know that you love them, you want to say to them, I can't help you when I'm here suffering right alongside of you. And when I'm not with you, then I can more easily see you in a better state of being. And sometimes they are emotionally, we're not talking about physical illness, but sometimes they are emotionally too far gone to hear you. Because there are a lot of people that the more they're suffering, the more they darn well think that you should be right there standing with them suffering too. And if you're not, then you're just not a good friend, when actually the opposite is true. Because law of attraction is about inclusion. There is no exclusion. There is only about attraction. There's no pushing away of anything. And so when you're standing inside awareness of a problem, that's just where you are. You're having a step one moment and that's fine. But don't ask yourself to be in the receptive mode when you're having a step one moment. So then you have to ask yourself, how many step one moments do I need in order to ask for an improvement? Well, not more than you've already got. You've already asked. So now, how are you going to find a way to tune into a frequency that's not only going to help them, but will help you too? How are you going to turn into that frequency? That's like setting your radio dial on a station that plays some sort of music or commentary that you don't like and just saying, I'm just going to stay here until they change their tune. <laughs> I'm just going to keep listening until they change their tune. And we say, it might be a while. Or maybe you could change your dial. We're asking all of you, what do you think it is? Let's have a conversation about this. What causes you to lock yourself in to an unwanted situation? And what makes you willing to stay in that unpleasant situation? When everything that you know about the laws of the universe tells you that no good will come from that. And so we're just doing another sales job here. We're just wanting to convince you that you've got to care enough about how you feel. Do you understand what we mean by the receptive mode? Do you? Do you get it that you are an extension of source energy and that that source energy is being flowed to you at all times and that with some subtle tuning that you could be the receiver of it? 
And do you get it that some situations it's easier for you to receive it than others? We're not asking you to stand in the middle of a big mess and get in the receptive mode. No one can do that. But we're asking you not to stay there all the time. We're asking you to get away from there and get into a quiet place. Quiet your mind. Allow your thoughts to soften. Get into a meditative state. Allow yourself to reconnect with this life-giving resource and source energy. Allow yourself to replenish. Let your vibrational nature begin again. Find the place of no thought because in the absence of thought, there'll be a pure vibration, a pure vibration. It won't be very invigorating. It won't be very interesting, but it will be pure in that there will be no resistance in it. And if you can stay there for as little as 16 or 17, 16 or 17, 16 or 17, 16 or 17, 16 seconds another thought like it will join it and now you've got a little momentum going and then it's easier still and easier still and easier still until you have stabilized again and now you're back in your energy stream back into your knowing of well-being now life's going to keep coming to you again something else is going to happen but for that one time in meditation, you will be more stable when it comes than you would have been if you didn't accomplish that, you see. And before you know it, you'll be stable enough that it doesn't matter what's happening, you'll have your sea legs. You'll be stable enough that you'll be anticipating what's coming and you'll be ready for it. You'll be stable enough that your energy connected to source, which is more powerful then we can even find words to describe. You'll find a leverage in your alignment that will allow you stability no matter what's going on. And then you don't have to hide from them. You can go to where they are and maintain your stability. And if something extreme happens and you feel your own stability slipping, then you must leave and regain your stability. It's like anyone had any lifeguard training? Jerry talked about it a lot. He was a lifeguard in New Orleans on Lake Pontchartrain. And he was told early on, he was a strong swimmer, really good lifeguard. He used to practice saving someone all the time. And Esther said, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Because Esther did not see herself as a strong swimmer. And when we get into the ocean, she'd say, let's practice you saving me right away. Let's make sure you've still got it. But his instructor said to him, it's important that if you're in the process of saving someone and they're flailing about and they're taking you down, you may have to let them drown. And Jerry said, that's ridiculous. Why would I become a lifeguard and let someone drown? And the lifeguard said, well, then you may not live to save another because sometimes the flailing about is enough that you cannot maintain your survival under those conditions. Sometimes you just have to save yourself. Well, we don't want to be that dramatic. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We want to be every bit that dramatic. If you are not selfish enough to secure your footing in the receptive mode, then you don't have anything to give anyone else anyway. So really you could develop some very good skills at communication. You could say, I want to stay here. And my old instinct was to stay here because I thought I could make it better. But after this many years of trying to make these situations better and only discovering that I only made them worse, I'm going to take all of my love for you and I'm going to walk out of here right now. And then demonstrate what the aligned you is like and what the not aligned you is like. You might sometimes be the one who's causing the problem. Someone else might be sitting in the chair talking to us about you. <laughs> because sometimes there are just things that get you out of balance. But when you are wise enough to know that you are out of balance, say to everyone, I'm out of balance and I'm no good to anyone here. And so if you will excuse me for a little while, I'm going to go off and I'm going to find my balance. And when I do, I'll be back. Then leave and find it and don't come back until you do. And those around you will come to appreciate it because you will demonstrate to them so many things. You will demonstrate to them your awareness of where you are vibrationally. You will demonstrate to them your appreciation of them and your wanting to be of value to them. 
you will demonstrate to them your ability to come back into alignment after being out of alignment. You will demonstrate to them, especially over time, a very steady course. And you will also demonstrate to them an ability to hold your own in situations that formerly were not that easy for you to hold your own. And it is only under these conditions that you will ever be consistently happy in the world. Because nearly everywhere you look, in every particle of every piece, of every piece, of every piece, of every piece, there is wanted and unwanted. And the more you train yourself to the vibration of wanted, then the nicer experience that you're going to have. So it's the same with everything. When you just ignore the lack, the isness, and you just look at what you want, then all the lack starts to melt yes, away. Yes, precisely, yeah. but the operative word here is ignore. Because if you're in the middle of it and there's momentum going, law of attraction will not allow you to ignore it. You're already part of it. And so now you're asking yourself to do an impossible thing. I've got this momentum going and now all of a sudden I'm just going to change subjects. Have you ever had the experience of deciding that you're going to meditate and then go to meditate and you can't quiet your mind because the momentum is such that you can't quiet your mind? That's why we encourage it earlier in the day rather than later because there's not so much momentum on so many subjects going. But sometimes it is difficult to quiet your mind and we want you all to be nicer to yourself. We don't want you to take this conversation as any sort of judgment or criticism of why or what you are doing in the middle of a negative situation. Life is happening around you. Manifestations are full of all kinds of things, but we would like you to be less involved in the manifestations that are already underway and more involved in the manifestations that are in the process of becoming. We would like you to be more aware of what you are doing in terms of the receptive mode and the thoughts that are flowing. You could be so well in the receptive mode that something could be going on with family or friends, something could be going on and you could walk in the room and your momentum could be such that if they're not too far gone, you could make a difference just by walking in the room. And even if you stay and listen for a little bit, you might be, since you're still in the receptive mode, inspired to say something really funny or really clever or really insightful that might awaken them to what's going on in some way. And you might be so on your game that whatever comes back to you, you're ready for that too. We're not suggesting that you have to run and hide all the time. We're just saying, if you're not ready to be ready to be ready to be ready, run and hide. But if you're ready to be ready to be ready, then that's where some of the most brilliant, insightful things will come, you see. Sometimes in the middle of a very big problem and you're the one that has the solution and they'll look at you like, where did you come from? How were you able to get that solution so easily? And you'll say, because I wasn't in here all wadded up with you and the problem. Solutions come easily to those who aren't all wadded up in the problem. That's why step one and step three are very far apart steps with source energy smack dab in the middle, giving you the answers to everything that matters. Helpful? This was a good conversation. Really good. Thank you. Yes, really good. <laughs>